Sometimes we really ignore simple things. Most of the time when we create our software, we may not need a complex data structure or a complex piece of software. Not saying that they are not good. They are good, they are great, but they may not be suitable for the requirement for which we are writing our software. And as an individual software developer, we must always judge what is that we need to create our software. What is that is required. Let's not start using things because you know, people are using it. Somebody in Stack Overflow is saying that or Chat GPT is saying that or maybe some YouTube video is saying that because we are individuals with brain and we need to apply the same. And if you are looking for something simple for creating a database for your code, your program, you can consider SQLite. So today in this particular video, we are going to look into SQLite and we will write small set of Python code to understand the working of SQLite. So today for the demonstration purpose, I'll be using Python, but SQLite can be coded in pretty much all popular programming languages. So let's go ahead and see. Before I go ahead and, you know, write some code on SQLite, let me tell you that what is SQLite? It's a C library. I am just showing you a snapshot from the official website. And look at here, it's small, fast, self-contained, highly reliable, fully featured SQL database engine. And in case you are worrying about it, you should know that SQLite is the most used database engine in the world. Okay, and its footprint is small and can be used for pretty much most of the small, small purposes. We rely on the bigger databases. Okay, now the good thing is that look at this the developers have placed to keep the support of SQLite till the year 2050. Now, look at this we know that the software life is in the range of five to ten years, you know, normally. So, it's good to use SQLite. And SQLite is actually, you know, uh, part of SQLite consortium and the members including these companies, which you can see in your screen right now. Now, the biggest benefit of using SQLite is that SQLite is not a separate process. Okay. It attaches itself to your own process, just like a library. So when you are starting your program, you do not need to create a separate server or start a separate server to make sure that your program is working. Remember, if you are using, you know, even MySQL or any other database, you need to start that database and that database must be listening on a port for it to connect to your program. That's not the case with SQLite. SQLite attaches itself inside your process as a library. So its runtime is within your process and you are not connecting with SQLite via socket communication. And now as communicated earlier in the context of Python, let's see how we can make use of SQLite. The first thing what we will do is that pip install SQLite 3 and then we will import it. Okay. Now, once we import the SQLite, the second step is to connect. You know, we can connect to SQLite by giving a database name. So this will be the database that will be created on your disk inside the folder of your program or your specified folder. The biggest thing we can also create in memory database by specifying colon memory colon over here. We are going to see that in a moment. OK, and then we will get a cursor. OK, cursor is something which does pretty much everything, whatever you want to do with SQLite in terms of creating, manipulating all the CRUD operations. OK, so the first thing we will do is that we will create a table saying that, you know, table as YouTube. And we will make sure that our cursor execute this db create. And then we can insert the data again using cursor. And we will have to commit the data. We will see all those things in the code and understand what it means and why we are doing this. And then after that, we need to close the connection. And as shown, if you want to drop the table, you can drop the table also. Okay. So let's go ahead and see the same thing in our Python code. Okay. So here is my folder right now. I'll go ahead and run this particular code in the debug mode so that I can explain the same to you. Now I have written this delete database because I wanted to delete this data.db whenever I start my code because while demonstrating, I may create the file multiple times and I may forget to delete the same. Okay. So the first thing first, let's start with, you know, check SQLite database. We'll go into this code and see how it works. So I'm entering in the debug mode. 
let me go inside the function and I am not doing anything with the time right now. Okay. So let me come here and I'll go inside that. And this is where I start my connections. Now you can see that I am calling SQLite.connect with data.db. Okay. I am creating a database and creating a connection to it. Okay. So I'm creating database using these two constant. I'm creating two tables. One is called YouTube and one is called author info. I'm creating a couple of tables because I wanted to show you how it works internally. Okay. Now, as I demonstrated earlier, I need to go ahead and get the cursor. And then using the cursor, I will execute the command called db create and I'll execute the command db create second also. Now you can see the connection cursor red file and red file second in the debug window. And you know that this command is executed and the return value is returned. Now, if we go ahead and go again, I need to talk about something called, you know, SQLite master table. Now, SQLite is a very small database. It has its own master table. Master table is the place where it maintains what all table is created and loaded into the memory and what all table it needs to connect to. It's a kind of B tree structure which has most of the metadata related to a particular table. Let's go ahead inside this function and see. Now I'll be using this SQLite itself to execute the command saying the select star from SQLite master and I am going to see master details. Okay. So if you go ahead and see master details, you will see these things. You know, both the table, table, um, YouTube, YouTube, table, author info, and the command that used to create the table now. So the first element, I'll talk about these elements. Let me go ahead and, you know, execute the column names also. So I'm just uh, using the pragma command and getting the type table info of SQLite master. Uh, let me go ahead and see the column name. Let me explain the column name first. So there are one, two, three, four, five columns, right? So first is the type, type of the table that is being created. It could be a table, it could be an index, the name and the table name. So if you are creating a table, the name and table name will be same. But if you are creating a view or index, then name will be of that index and table name will be of that index. Root page is all about a helper thing to create a B3 index uh, using which SQLite will make use of, you know, finding where the database is and fourth is the SQL command that is used to create uh, the table or index. Okay. Now we go ahead and see the master detail. If you can see that first one is table, the name is YouTube, table name is YouTube and the root page is two over here, which means it is an index because the root page of another table is three. And this is the precise reason why I created two tables to explain it to you and the command which was used to create these tables. So now I believe you must have understood the, you know, SQLite master and how it works. What is the purpose of it? And let's go ahead now. And now what I will do is that I'll go ahead and insert the record. So let me open the debugger window again. Now I am uh, executing this command to insert two data, two rows of data in this particular code. Let me just reduce it right here. So right now I'm executing this values one and two, and now I will have to commit. Now, as soon as you insert the data, it may be gone into the buffer of the SQL light for that particular table, but you need to commit it to actually write into the database. Okay. Now, after committing, and if I just go ahead and say select star from YouTube, you can see what all you will get. Uh, let me fetch it. And if you see the record site trader, you can see, oops, I have to see the records. These are the two records. Okay, that is there. And this is the way you are going to insert data. Let's move forward because there are many interesting things lies ahead. Now let's talk about inserting multiple records. Still now we have inserted only single record every cursor dot execute one record is inserted that might be slow if you want to insert a large amount of data because every time the command executes and comes back it will take time if you want to you know insert multiple data you can create an array of tuples over here like in here you can see that i have a data which is having two records number three and number four and i will call execute many insert into youtube values and the 
array, my array. Okay, and once I have committed, and let me, you know, run the select star from YouTube, and this time my data should contain, you know, records should contain four records. One, two, I have inserted earlier using, you know, single cursor dot execute three, four, I have inserted just now. Now, let me delete the database so that it's available for the next time. Let me talk about something called, you know, insert the SQLite database with rollback. Now, you are inserting something, you can do a rollback also. Let's go ahead and see. I'm running the same in the debug mode again. Let's go inside this particular function. I will do is that I will get the connection. I will create the table just like I did earlier. I'm not going to go ahead in that and I'll check the SQLite master. I'm not going to go ahead in that right now again. Now I am inserting the records without committing. Let's go inside this particular function and I'll be using execute many and I am not committing it yet. Okay. Basically this gives me a chance to roll back my changes so I can roll back and then commit. And if I just run the command, you know, select star from YouTube. And if I go ahead and see the records, there are zero records. Now, if you are having questions about why there is a zero record, because I have deleted the existing data.db file from my disk and I have created it once again. Now I did put a couple of records using execute mini, but I haven't committed it all. Okay. Now let's see something else. Let me go to the main file again, main function. Let me, you know, comment this. And in this case, now what I will do is that I want to insert a large set of data. How I can do that? Okay. Let's go over here and see, and let me run the code in the debug mode again. Let me go inside the function. I'm not going to talk about connection master table. Let me go into this large record function. So what I am doing over here is that for one in range zero to 40,000, I'm inserting, you know, Python programming tutorial number with zero to 39,999. Now there are two things. The first way, the way I am doing is that I am planning to run this command and I am planning to execute, which means that I'll be keeping approximately 40,000 records in non-committed way. And I'm doing the commit at once, you know, only once. And then when I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve that, the records will be, you know, 39,999. You can see all those things, okay? Now, we need to see how much time it takes. So let me run it in the direct mode without going into the debug mode. So you can see over here is that uh, time taken to insert 40,000 record is 0 0.1079 some XYZ seconds, okay? Now what if I go here and instead of writing a commit over here, let me commit each and every record, okay? What will happen? Let me see. If I go ahead and run this code, still running, that means anyway, it's going to take more time. Now, by the time, you know, the result appears, it should take approximately 10 seconds. I tested it earlier on my machine. Now, it's all a trade-off. You know that if you are going to commit, yeah, it took around 14 seconds this time. So now if you are going to commit for each and everything you do, it is going to take time. If you don't do that, those things will be kept in buffer. And that's a trade-off as a programmer, you have to decide what you want to do. I don't prefer doing committing for all the records every time, but maybe it's not a bad idea to use execute many, or maybe it's also not a bad idea to keep a pool of things before committing, but depends upon your code, your code performance and requirement. Now, the only thing we need to talk about is in memory database. Let me go ahead and, you know, start the code in the debugger mode. And if I am going to go ahead and see, here is how you can create in-memory database by specifying colon memory colon, which means the data will be there in the memory till your actual process is in the memory. Okay. And for, you know, for same amount of this 40,000 records, if I can just run the comparison between in-memory database and normal database, uh, let me remove this commit from here. I'm removing this commit and I'm keep keeping it here. So let me go ahead and run this and let's see. You know, you can see that 
uh, for 40,000 records, this is what is being taken by Dix DB, and this is what is it's being taken by my in-memory DB. So naturally, in-memory will be fast. But today we have SSDs and you know very fast disk drives, and it also depends upon multiple factors. But in a large scale, in-memory will be faster, as you can see over here. Maybe you know 40,000 records are less. Okay. Again, as an individual programmer, it's you who need to decide on this. Okay. So I do hope and believe that I was able to explain the SQLite database using Python in the easiest possible way. And I also believe that I gave you lots of insights on this particular topic. Thank you all. Thanks for watching. We will meet again. Until the next time we meet, good day, goodbye. You take care.